Hi, do you edit your photos in Photoshop and you often run to a situation where you add a lot of layers into your document and then the entire program starts to become very very sluggish, very laggy and it is very hard to do any further edits to your image. And oftentimes you get this annoying error that scratch disks are full, you cannot perform a certain operation and sometimes it even happens when you try to save your file, which is like the worst, right? So on one hand what you can do is basically flatten the image every couple of edits and that way you end up with a single image layer and it indeed fixes the sluggishness problem, but on the other hand, if you do that, you're basically losing the ability to go to some earlier stage of the edit and make any necessary tweaks if you want so, so I don't really like working like this. So in this video, I want to show you a cool trick that I came up with to basically take the best of both worlds, which means that you can work with image layers and adjustment layers completely non-destructively, but at the same time keeping your working files relatively small and simple, and that way Photoshop runs smooth as butter, even on a regular laptop. So let's fire Photoshop and let me show you how I do it. Alright, and we are here in Photoshop and here is an image of the Milky Way that will serve as an example for this video. And as you can see currently it takes only 38 megabytes of space on my disk and that is because I on purpose reduce the resolution of this image so I make sure that everything runs smoothly for this example. So it's only 2 megapixels and that's why it's only 38 megabytes. And as soon as I add some adjustment layer, let's say that I make a brightness contrast adjustment maybe reduce the brightness a little bit, maybe increase the contrast a little bit. As you can see, if I save this right now, it immediately gets bumped to 43 megabytes. And that is actually because of the layer masks. Pretty much the layer mask is just like a regular image layer. The Photoshop document needs to contain all that information. So as soon as you have layer mask, and if you edit Milky Way photos, you definitely need to have layer mask because you're going to be doing some selective adjustments around the Milky Way. And by the way, if you don't know me, I have a whole bunch of Milky Way tutorials how to shoot those images, how to edit them. I will put a playlist and put it all by the end of this video. So make sure to check that out as well. And of course, like I said, in the intro after doing my adjustments I could just select everything right click and then go to flatten image and that way I end up with a single image if I save it I am currently actually back at 16 megabytes only which is even smaller than the original but I am baking in here my adjustment and there is no way to go back here if I reopen this file at a later day to actually go back and tweak out this brightness contrast adjustment so let's open another example when you can see a full edit of this image that I have made recently so as you can see if I drag this on here this image now contains a whole bunch of layers. As you can see, if I uh, disable all of that, this is the original sky. Here I have blended in the ground shot, which has a ground that is sharp. And that is because I was shooting this image on an astro tracker, which means that the sky shot had blurry ground. And I also covered that in those other tutorials that make sure to check out. And then I added a whole bunch of curves adjustment. We have first contrast, then we have a contrast right here around the top portion of the image. Then I have some uh, light pollution reduction, which entails a color balance layer, a curves layer, and then a layer mask that looks like this, that targets basically this portion over the horizon. And then I have another color balance that I have another curves, another hue saturation, another curves, and some dodging and burning layer. And as you can see, it adds up to a, a lot of layers. And this image currently, the stiff file is 100 125 megabytes and as I mentioned before if this was a full 30 megabytes image it would be like few gigabytes of space and it would already cost Photoshop to be sluggish on my computer so that's why I reduced the resolution to make sure that I could actually open those files. So let me show you what I do in this situation in order to make sure that everything runs smoothly on full resolution files. So what I do is I basically break up my edit into multiple files. So the way to do it is let's say that we have blended our sky with our ground shot then we added one curve then we added another curves and then we want to move to another file and in another file we will basically start with a flattened version of this image so what we want to do is want to actually stamp what we have visible right here so you can do that by clicking the combination of keys command option shift and e and that way we have this image layer and this image layer basically is everything we have right here combined into this single image layer and that one we're going to send to a new file so we're going to right click and duplicate layer send it to a new document. We are going to name it stage two of my edit because this file that we have right here is going to be stage one, so stage two and then OK. And as you can see in this stage two file, we have this flattened version, which already contains those four layers. And then we can basically move all of these. We can right click, duplicate layers and send it over to stage two, OK. As we can see, we have all of those adjustments right here. We can enable them. And that way we are ending up with the same final photo that you previously saw. And then in this one, we can pretty much delete all of them. We can also delete this one if we want to. And then we are going to save it as a new file. And that one is going to be named stage one. 
So we are saving, okay. And then the other one we can also save and we are going to name it stage two of course and save it, okay. And then as you can see down here, stage one only weighs 76 megabytes and stage two 86, while the image with all the layers weighed 125 megabytes. So that way I was able to chunk it into different two files. And right here, if I decided that I actually needed to change something in the earlier version of this edit from which this layer was created, I can just hop to this file change something here so let's say that I'm going to go easy on this curve so maybe reduce the opacity right here then I can flatten it again command option shift and E then copy this one by going to the duplicate and duplicating it to the stage 2 file now it's right here and then I can just delete this one and then I have an updated version and then all of those adjustment layers will apply to this updated layer and of course you can break it up into multiple chunks like I have mentioned in one of my previous edits when I was doing a full Milky Way 180 degrees panorama I used on a tracker I have a whole bunch of layers and I have chunked it up to like five different files of five different stages of my edit and that way each file was relatively simple which guaranteed that Photoshop would run smoothly for those single files but at the same time even if I am at the final stage of my my edit I can always go back to this first file tweak what I need to tweak flatten the image and then copy it over to the stage 2 do the edits copy it over to the stage 3 etc etc I know it's not ideal because it requires a lot of stamping visible if you need to actually go back to another file at the earliest stage of your edit but that way all of those adjustments layers are saved somewhere in those different files so you can always go back and you can always tweak around if you need to while you look at your final image because sometimes you know we tend to overdo stuff and then we need to dial them back and the thing that was overdone is at the first stage of the edit so that way you can do it and you can still edit large resolution files even on a regular laptop like I have an old MacBook and that's basically how I do it. So I hope this video helped you. Let me know down below in the comments if you have problems running Photoshop with a whole multitude of layers. And like I said, check out my astrophotography tutorials by clicking on one of these two playlists. You'll definitely like some of these videos if you like astrophotography or Milky Way photography. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I post new videos pretty much every single week. So hopefully see you in one of those videos. And don't forget to leave a like under this video if you liked it. Uh, yeah, bye bye, see you next time.